come back. Let's continue from where we stopped. So now blood transfusion, we're talking about blood transfusion. If blood group A, who is supposed to donate to blood group B, but donate to blood, so who is supposed to donate to blood group A, but donate to blood group B, now what will happen that agglutination will do what we occur. Now this is the clumping together of antigens or red blood cells with the corresponding antibodies in the plasma of wrong blood group. What they are trying to say is that what? That the red blood cell of blood group O will not correspond with the antibodies of blood group B. Now this will result to blocking of the blood vessels and may finally lead to death. Now the blood vessels are what? We have the veins, we have the arteries, we have the capillaries. Now the blood vessels are, are blocked. Oxygen will not be able to do what? To flow through, the, to circulate around the body. Even food nutrients, another essential nutrient that the body needs. So that it can, also, that it can lead to what? To death. Now let's see our reference. Now 2013, question 44. To which blood group do universal recipients belong? Now from our chart that we have what? That universal recipient is what? Blood group AB. Because it can do what? Can receive blood from what? From, both, from blood group A, blood group B, blood group AB, and blood group O. Why the universal donor is blood group what? O. Can donate to blood group A, blood group B, blood group AB, and blood group O. 2014, question 46. An individual with blood group AB can receive blood from those in blood groups. Now we'll go to let's say blood group AB now. Now from our chart now, this is recipient blood group AB. What they are trying to tell that an individual blood group AB can receive blood from blood group A, blood group B, blood group AB, and blood group O. Which the correct answer is what? A, blood group A, blood group B, blood group AB, and blood group O. 2017, question 40. Now which of the following is correct about blood transmission? A, blood group AB can only receive from groups A and B and not from group O. But blood group AB can receive from what? From A, B, AB, and O. That means it's wrong. B, blood group O can receive from groups A and AB and from A from groups A and B and from AB, which is wrong. Group B can only donate to blood group B, not to AB and O. But this one, blood group O can donate to groups A, B, AB, but cannot what? Receive, which is correct. Now the next thing we'll treat hormones. Hormones. Now hormones are what? A chemical substance secreted by endocrine glands directly into the what bloodstream which carries them to the to the to organs and tissues of the body to exert their functions now endocrine glands secrete what hormones to secrete it directly to the what to the bloodstream to make sure it gets to the organ in which it to do what to able to perform its function it will not just secrete and leave it there now, in the first, we'll talk about endocrine glands, hormone secreted, and location secreted. The first endocrine gland, we'll talk thyroid gland. Now, thyroid gland will secrete the hormone they call tyroxine, and it's located at the what, anterior region of the, the neck. Adrenal gland, the hormone secreted is what? Adrenaline. The adrenaline, they, call it, they also call it what? The emergency hormone. It's the location that it will secrete, that is the adrenal medulla. That's if you are used to the kidney, you notice that there's a part of the kidney that is called the adrenal medulla. Then the pancreas, another endocrine gland, to secrete insulin, and the location secreted is what? The duodenum. We have the pituitary gland, we secrete pituitary, and it's located at the base of the what? The midbrain. Then we have the testes that will secrete what? Testosterone located at the scrotum, then ovaries will secrete oestrogen and progesterone, also lo location secreted within the ovaries. Take note, 
Adrenaline is the emergency hormone. Um, while this one, progesterone is the pregnancy hormone. Now the female, they have two hormones, the oestrogen and the progesterone. This oestrogen has to do with the sexual development and others. While this progesterone is the what? The pregnancy hormone. That means this hormone will only function when a woman is what? When a woman is pregnant. It will help to inhibit ovulation during pregnancy. Then, this tyrosine is a growth hormone. That's with the one that will tell if somebody will be what? Tall or short. When there's over secretion of tyrosine, it will lead to what they call gigantism. The person will be very tall, very big. But when there's under secretion of tyrosine, the person will be what? Short. Then this one is emergency hormone. This insulin now has to do what? To break down what? Excess sugar. More like to regulate what? Blood sugar. Then we have the pituitrine, which is the master. This gland, this pituitary gland is the master gland. That means this, this endocrine gland controls the secretion of other what? Before other endocrine glands will secrete their own hormones, this one will do what? Will regulate it. That's why this hormone is located where? In the brain. Then the testes and the ovaries. Now, if you are used to studying your jump pass questions, you see something like this. This diagram is very common. You see it all over. But there's, it's, not, it's not common for you to, to like study more than five years without you seeing this diagram. Now, this diagram, they are just trying to tell you where each endocrine gland is what? It's located. Now, this pituitary gland is located at the base of the midbrain. The thyroid gland at the top of the neck, that's the anterior region of the neck. Then the adrenaline, that's the adrenal gland. Then the pancreas that will secrete insulin. Then the position of the ovary in the female and then the, the testes. Just take note of the positions. Because the way they will ask the question is just, maybe they, will, they can use maybe like Roman figure, then they'll tell you to identify which gland is present in. Then the reference, you can go to your jump pass question, two and two, question 27 and 28. Then 2007, question 21 and 22. Then we also have others. Then the next topic I want us to treat, reproductive behaviors. They say reproductive behaviors. We have oviparity, we have viviparity, and we have ovoviviparity. But the first one now, oviparity, that now organism, they do what? They lay eggs. Now it defines the process of reproduction in animals in which the, in which the animals lay eggs. First, the embryo grows and develops within the egg, after which the eggs are hatched to give rise to new offspring. Embryo can grow and, will grow and develop within the egg. Now, the first thing, the eggs may be fertilized inside or outside the body of the female animal. That's for oviparity. Now, first, it's either the eggs, you can fertilize the eggs inside the body of the female animal, and the eggs can also be fertilized outside the body of the female animal. That's oviparity. The examples of oviparous animals that exhibit external fertilization are fish and toad. Now, if a fish wants to, want to reproduce, she will put her eggs by the side of the river bank, she will play with the male fish, and the male will secrete the sperm cell on it, and to do what? To fertilize the egg. That's why they call it what? External what? Fertilization. The eggs were fertilized outside her body outside the body of the female animal. The same thing we told. Now, why those that exhibit internal fertilization are birds and reptiles? The eggs will be fertilized inside, then they'll do what? They'll lay eggs. The same thing with reptiles. And for reptiles, we have lizards, snakes, crocodiles, and the rest of it. Now what? Now first, take note, for oviparity, fertilization can, can be what? Internal, and it can also be what? External. Now the next one, number two, viviparity. This one is common among mammals. Now this is defined as process of production in which animals give birth to young ones alive. Now the eggs are fertilized inside the body of the female animal. The development of embryo takes place internally. While for oviparity, the development of, development of embryo takes place within the what? Within the egg. That means as the egg is, as the egg is growing, See, it is hatched. That's how the embryo develops. While for viviparity, 
the embryo develops within the body of the what? Female animal. That's inside the body of the female animal. And also, fertilization takes place inside the body of the female animal. They give birth to their young ones alive. V v oviparity, they lay eggs. Now, the development of the embryo takes place internally. The viviparous animals are mostly what? Mammals. Mammals like man, goats, dogs, cattle. Then the next one, ovoviviparity. Ovo this one is not very common. It's just common among some sharks and like black flies and other insects. Now, this is the process of reproduction in which the animals produce eggs. But instead of laying them, the eggs develop and hatch inside the mother's body. Now, for oviparity, they will lay the eggs. The eggs will hatch outside. While for ovoviviparity, they will produce eggs. The eggs will develop inside the mother's body and also will do what? Hatch inside her body. Now, examples are like some sharks, some varieties of sharks, black flies. We have what? Ovo viviparity. Now, this diagram of an egg. This diagram is very common. We have the shell, this is the albumen, both the thin and the thick albumen, the germinal disc. We have the yolk, we have the chalaza and the air, air space. Now, I want you to study this diagram. Take note of the labelings and their positions. The next one will treat the functions of the labeled parts. Now, functions of the part of egg. First, the shell. Now, when you see an egg, it has a shell. Now, the shell is semi-permeable. If they say something is semi-permeable, that means something can pass through it. Ah, this is semi-permeable, like a sieve now. If I have a sieve to filter pop, it's, it's semi-permeable. Something can pass through it. So, I say, first, the shell is what? Semi-permeable which means that air and moisture can pass through its pores. That means what? Air and moisture can pass through its pores. That is the pores of the what? The shell. The next one is chalaza. This is the chalaza. This chalaza now, if you see this chalaza now, the chalaza is from here to this point, from here to this point, and this is the, this is the yolk. Now the chalaza that, it holds the yolk in the center of the egg. Now, see the, this is the yolk, and this is the chalaza, holding what? The yolk in position. So the yolk will not be what? Will not just be moving. Then we have the albumen. The albumen, that's what they call the egg white. Now, it provides a liquid medium in which the embryo develops. It also contains a large amount of what? Of protein necessary for proper development. So now, the embryo is developing and also what? Feeding. Now, the yolk also, Another source of food for the embryo. First, we have the albumen that provides a source of protein. The yolk also is another source of food for the what? Embryo. It contains all the fat in the egg. The air space. Air space. This is the air space. Just, you notice when you peel your egg, you notice some kind of, maybe if you, if you boil an egg now, you notice that it's not all the egg that is covered. You notice this space. Now, this space is called what? Air space. Now, this air space is for what? For respiration. Now, the air space for respiration and pressure adjustment. You have the germinal disc. Now, this is the germinal disc. Now, the germinal disc, the embryo develops from this disc and gradually sends blood vessels to the yolk to use it for nutrition as the embryo develops. Now, when, when you get a fresh egg, you notice that it has yolk, albumen, and the rest. But... When you try to get an egg that is due for hatching, then you break it, you notice that all those yolks and the rest and the albumen will disappear. That's because this germinal disc was able to do what? To grow, that the embryo developing from this what? From this germinal disc. Now, for reference, 2001 question three, viviparity occurs in mammals. For viviparity, the mammals, the what? That's viviparous animals. Examples are what? Mammals give birth to their young ones alive. Fertilization is internal. The embryo also develops inside the body of the female animal. While for reptile, reptile is what? Oviparity. Apes is oviparity. Amphibians are also what? Oviparity. Reptiles take note that the fertilization will be what? Internal. 
if two, the fertilization will be what? Internal. For amphibians, the fertilization will be what? External. Then you also go to 2001, question 14 and 15. 2007, question 18. 2018, question 24 and 25. 2020, question 36 and 37. And the next thing we'll treat, cell, plant cell. Plant cell, now you have to do what? You have to study. Study the diagram. Learn how to do what? How to draw and label a plant cell. The same thing with an animal cell. You learn how to draw and label an animal cell. A plant cell is present in plants, while animal cells are present in what? In animals. So now, cell organelles and their function. They say cell organelles, we are talking of what? Part of these cells. Part of plant cells and also part of what? Animal cells. They call them what? Cell organelles. Take note of the shapes. The shapes, this is mitochondria, this is how it looks like. We have mitochondria, have mitochondria, mitochondria. Take note of the shapes of the what? Of the structures. Now, the first thing, cell membrane. It is also semi-permeable. Don't forget, semi, if they say something is semi-permeable, that means what? That means material can pass through, through it. Now, that it selectively allows materials in and out of the cell. That's the first thing. That's cell membrane. Now, this is cell membrane. Now, material can go into the cell and also can go out of the what? Of the cell. Because of the cell membrane. And look at the location just outside the cell. Now, nucleus. Nucleus stores hereditary information. This is very simple. Chromosomes, they carry the genes which determine the individual characteristics of an organism. The next one, vacuoles, that they store water, salts, protein, and carbohydrates. That they hate the turgidity of cell by helping remove excess water. So that the, the, so that the cell will not be too like the cell will not be like turgid, will not swell. So now they'll have to remove what? Excess water. The mitochondria, which is also called the powerhouse, that is a site for aerobic what? respiration and the production, of, production centers for ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Then plastids. Plastids, dark stage of photosynthesis are carried out in the stroma of the plastids. We have chloroplasts also, another part of the cell. It contains chlorophyll, that it is a site for photosynthesis of carbohydrates. Endoplasmic reticulum. It is a site for protein synthesis within the cell. They say protein synthesis, that's man production of what? Of protein. We have lysosome. They contain enzymes that break down large molecules of food vacuoles into smaller ones, more like digestion, breaking down of what? Of large molecules into what? Smaller molecules. Ribosome also responsible for the production of protein, that's protein synthesis. Centrals are important in cell division. Cell division where we have mitosis and meiosis. Cell wall, it provides protection, shape, and mechanical support to the cell. Now, there's something I want you to get. Now, for these differences between plant and animal cell, what you need to do is take note of what is present in the plant cell and is absent in the animal cell. Also, what is present in the animal cell and it's absent in the what? Plant cell. That's why I asked you to do what? That's why I said you should do what? Study your diagram. Study the diagram of plant cell. Know how to draw and label it. Also study the diagram of animal cell. Know how to draw and label it. So now for the difference is now. Cellulose cell wall is present in plant cell. Why cellulose cell wall is absent in what? Animal cell. For plant cell, chloroplast is present. Why for animal cell, chloroplast is absent? Because this chloroplast, the function is for what? Photosynthesis. Plants, they exhibit what they call photosynthesis to produce their own what? food. Animal now cannot do, cannot undergo what they call photosynthesis because we depend on plants for our own what? food. That's why chloroplast is what? Absent. Now, vacuoles are few and large in plant cell. While for animal cell, they are what? Many and small. Now, Kavaku, Kavaku, small. Why for plant cell, this is the vacuum. This one like this. A large central, large central vacuum. That's why they say for plant cell, they are what? Large. The vacuum is large. Why for animal cell, it is what? Small. 
The first one, which I say, cell wall, because cell wall is present in plant cell. But in animal cell, we don't have what? Cell wall. That's why I say you should study the diagram, know which one is present in, in plant cell and which one is absent in plant cell. Now it has a definite shape, usually rectangular. This one, it has no what? Definite shape. Stores lipids as oil. Now, lipids are fat and oil. Lipids are what? Fat and oil. So now for plant, it will store lipids as what? Oil. While animal will store lipids as what? As fat. For plants, they are usually large in size. For animal, they are small in size. Plants, they store carbohydrates as starch. While animals, they store carbohydrates as glycogen. Glycogen, they also call it animal, animal fat. Now, similarities. For the similarities now, if you study the diagrams, what you just need to know is which organelle is present in both? If you study the diagram of plant cell, study the diagram of animal cell, it will be very simple for you to do what? To give similarities. If you see it in the, which is very common in jam pass question, it will tell you which, which of the following organelles is present in both plant and animal cell. It will bring out some part of the uh, cell organelles. So now we have nucleus is present in both plant and animal cell. Goggy bodies, Present also, mitochondria present, which I say is the powerhouse center for aerobic respiration. Cytoplasm is present in both plant and animal cell. Chromosomes present in both plant and animal cell. Endoplasmic reticulum present in both plant and animal cell. Nucleus, ribosome, lysosome, and cell membrane are present in both plant and animal cell. Now the next, which I would like us to treat, digestive system and digestive enzymes of man. This is just the diagram of the alimentary canal, the diagram of the digestive system. We have the mouth, the tongue, the esophagus, the stomach, the pancreas, liver, gallbladder, bile, duodenum, cecum, appendix, ileum, colon, rectum, and anus. So now we have the mouth that the salivary gland will secrete what they call saliva. Now this is the esophagus where food will pass through, down to the stomach. Then the stomach now it will remain there, that's more like temporarily to be there for some time. Where we have enzymes that will act on the food, like the pepsin and renin. Now in the mouth now we have amylase that will act on starch first. Then in the stomach we have renin and pepsin. Pepsin will act on protein, renin will act on fat. Then we'll go down to the pancreas. Now in the pancreas we have trypsin and we also have lipase. Trypsin will still act on protein because this protein now, the breakdown, it will just be from protein to peptones as by the pepsin. Then down to the pancreas, to the ileum. I need for ileum is small intestine. I need for colon is large intestine. Down to the rectum. The liver will secrete bile. This is the bile dog. The gallbladder will store bile. Now let's now for the now the mouth now. Take note the one I this the one in bold as these are the enzymes. Now that mouth first the salivary gland in the mouth secretes saliva. That the saliva contains amylase. This amylase is the enzyme present in the mouth. That the amylase will break down starch molecules into smaller sugar molecules called maltose. Now go down to the stomach. Take note of these glands, please. The, the mouth has salivary gland, the stomach has gastric gland. The salivary gland will secrete what? Saliva. The gastric gland in the stomach will secrete what they call gastric juice, which contains renin and pepsin. The, saliv the salivary gland, that's the saliva, contains amylase. The gastric juice contains renin and pepsin. The renin will emulsify fat. Why pepsin breaks down protein to peptones. Take note now, from this now, digestion of starch will start in the mouth. Then digestion of protein will start in the what? Stomach. Now in the mouth, the only enzyme that is present is amylase and to break down starch. That's why I said digestion of starch starts in the mouth. Then in the stomach now, we have renin and pepsin. Pepsin now will start the breakdown of what? Of protein to what? Into peptones. That's why I said digestion of starch will start in the mouth. Take note, you can see it in objectives. Why does your protein start in the what? Stomach. 
Now go down the next one, duodenum. The pancreas in the duodenum secretes pancreatic juice. Take notes. Saliva contains amylase. Gastric juice contains renin and pepsin. Pancreatic juice contains trypsin and lipase. Now the trypsin breaks down peptones into polypeptides. Now take notes. This is the first stage of the breakdown of protein to peptones. Now the next enzyme that's pepsin now will break down protein to peptones. The next enzyme that will break, that will continue the digestion of protein will be what? Trypsin. That will break down these peptones to what? Polypeptides. Why lipase breaks down fat and oil to fatty acids and glycerol and the small intestine. That digestion ends in the what? Small intestine. Chemotrypsin breaks down polypeptides into what? Amino acids. This is the end product of what? Of protein. The end product of protein is called what? Amino acids. Then lactase breaks down sugars found in dairy products like the milk into simpler sugars, glucose and galactose. Maltase breaks down maltose into glucose. Sucrase breaks down sucrose into fructose and glucose. Now, now from here now, we talked of glucose, galact galactose, fructose. Now, those are types of what? Carbohydrates. Now, you have to understand carbohydrates so that you understand what? The, the end product. Now, they say carbohydrate is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is 2 ratio 1, as in the case of water. Water is H2O. That's 2 ratio 1. Now, types of carbohydrates, you have monosaccharides. Now, one, monosaccharides, also called simple sugars. They have only one unit of simple sugars, e.g., glucose, fructose, and galactose. So, examples of simple sugars are glucose, fructose, and galactose, which are monosaccharides. So, now, disaccharides, also called reducing sugars. They have two units of simple sugars. What they are trying to tell you that these disaccharides, they have two units of what? Of the simple sugars. So two units of simple sugars will give you one disaccharide. So examples of disaccharides are sucrose, maltose, and lactose. Some example now. Take notes, please, so that you know. Now glucose plus glucose, that's two units of what? Of monosaccharide will give you what? Maltose. Glucose plus fructose, that's glucose plus fructose. Two units of monosaccharides will give you what? Sucrose, that's disaccharide. We have glucose plus galactose, that's glucose plus galactose. That's two units of monosaccharides will give you what? Will give you lactose. Then the last one, polysaccharides, number three. Now this consists of more than two simple sugars joined together, e.g. starch and cellulose. This has come to the end of my lecture, and I wish you all success in your forthcoming exams. Thank you.